It's an Englishman in the Balkans uh, podcast. It is a very, very sunny day here in the north of the country. For those that have never tuned into the podcast before, uh, this comes from a small village called Chidarchini. It's about, oh, 18 kilometers north of Banja Luka and six kilometers from the town of Laktashi. Up until recently, I actually thought I was the only foreigner living here, but there could be one other. I'll try and find if they're living in a village and if we can t speak to them today. But I am uber excited to catch up with somebody on the podcast who I have been following from for some time. Uh, and we're going to find out about her. Yes, it's a lady um, today. In full transparency, right, I have here my phone open at this person's um, Instagram page. And it is a post about, about me. So I've cheated a little bit. I know a little bit about this person. And who is she? Well, I hope I get this right. Her first name is, it, how do you pronounce it? Kathy or Kaki? Kathy is the German pronunciation, but I'm totally fine with the English one too. Or it's okay. the Bosnian one, which is then Kati. So. <laughs> okay. So it's Kathy, and as she's just deluded, she's a German. She's a foreigner living in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and also she's an entrepreneur based in Sarajevo. And that's what we're going to find out uh, about today. Kathy, this might seem like a really basic, simple question, but they are the best. Who is Kathy? Well, yeah, it sounds so simple, but then again, it's like, well, who am who am I? <laughs> I wake up in the morning and I don't know. Um, no, well, I'm I'm a German, um, but I moved away from Germany the first time in 2015. I was always curious to experience new cultures, see something new, and um, well, then I got itchy feet when I returned to Germany. You know, so I've been living in Germany on and off for the past couple of years, mostly abroad in different places, South Africa, the Czech Republic, Denmark, and now Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is a country I never expected to be living in, but a country that turned me into a business owner, which is also something I never thought would happen. I know that you've traveled around and before coming to Bosnia and Herzegovina, you were based in Cape Town. How the heck did you arrive in this wonderful, heart-shaped, but very misunderstood country? Well, it all started with me meeting a Bosnian guy in Cape Town back in 2016. And I've been working and living abroad. He's been working and living abroad. Um, so from the moment we met, I knew, well, I will eventually visit Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I also knew, well, maybe at one point in my life, I will live here. Um, but I just didn't know it would, uh, I just didn't expect it would happen so soon. You know, I was more thinking about 20 years from now. But yeah, I've been visiting since 2017 on a yearly basis. And then during COVID, we actually kind of got stuck here because we couldn't go to South Africa. They had very strict border closures. Um, and we had basically just ended our lease in, in Germany already. We were ready to move. So we were looking for a country to just spend some time. And that ended up being here. I've never been to South Africa, but I did live in Germany, in northern Germany, for seven or eight years, a long time ago, back in the 1970s, I have to, to say. And when you compare the culture from my home country of the United Kingdom, where I haven't really lived for over 20 years, the culture that you were born and grew up in, in Germany, and the culture of Bosnia and Herzegovina could not be more different. What has been the biggest culture shock for you arriving in Bosnia Herzegovina? Well, I think to me it was mostly that people here have no filter, you know, and they ask you all those very personal questions when you first meet them. Like Germans are more private people, so you don't ask about children and marriage and money. But here, you know, people just burst out with all of those questions right from the start. So that was very weird to me in the beginning. 
I'm like, well, how is this concern you? <laughs> How, how did you handle it, though? I mean, for me, uh, it, it was strange to start off with. Now it's every day. It's commonplace. But back then, I used to feel like you. And But my, my defense mechanism was just to quickly change the topic. Yes. Yeah, I, I do that, too, mostly. I just change the topic or I give a very short, you know, yes or no answer or just like, I don't know. Yeah. And then I talk about something else. <laughs> That's my strategy, too. Well, I know um, that you are not a tourist per se um, in Sarajevo, but as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, you're an entrepreneur, and I'd like to find out more about that, actually. Um, as an expat, or do you still feel as an expat, but as an expat, how easy or maybe how difficult was it for you to realize your entrepreneurial dream and set up um, a company here in the country? Well, I mean, I mean, I have the great advantage that my partner is from here and that he's Bosnian. And we also found a great partner company to team up with um, to get the whole business running because I myself, I wouldn't have been able to to do it here, you know, I, it's not even the the bureaucracy and the logistics. It's more like the the language barrier. So I'm I'm glad that I had all of that support. Um, I, I mean, it was not my idea. It was like a joint idea of my husband and I. Um, because ever since I first came here, I I was like, whoa, why do more people come and visit? You know, it's it's nice. I know of so many people that go to Albania. Why? and more people going to Bosnia and Herzegovina. So we were thinking of opening a travel agency back then already in 2018, but we didn't pursue the idea because we thought it's too complicated. Um, well, and then we traveled the country extensively in 2020 because we couldn't go anywhere else. you know. <laughs> so we were driving around Bosnia and Herzegovina and um, when it became clear that living in South Africa will not work out for various reasons, um, we decided let's do it. You know, let's let's open that travel agency. If not now, then then when? And um, we sat down for one whole winter and did the strategy and planned everything. And yeah, then when we came to the bureaucratic part, there were. There were actually so many Bosnian people happy to help us and support us, you know, from lawyers to web designers to, I don't know, just all different kinds of professions. And that, that was very, very moving to me, you know, because in Germany, yes, of course, people might offer their help. But, you know, just offering your own services so free and for a much smaller fee than you would normally charge, that really meant a lot to me. I'm passionate about getting people as well to come and see this country. I think the more more tourists that we get uh, into Bosnia and Herzegovina, it can only benefit the country in so, so many ways that local people can't um, really imagine. But I, I am, that colourful view for me is slightly tinged somewhat uh, over all these years when it becomes glaringly apparent to me that both the nation state and the two entities and their tourist uh, offices, uh, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk, if I can use that uh, in in English phrase. And it seems that the only way, the only way that we, and I mean that in, a, in, in the greater we, can get more people, this is, seems to be the purview of smaller companies. For example, in Banja Luka, there is a small company that I know, and they're working day and night. Trust me, day and night. They're very, very professional, but they are small. They have very little in the way of um, resources. And it's a bit like the David and Goliath story. In Sarajevo, the capital uh, yeah. of, of the country, do you find that view uh, as well that it's more the smaller organizations. I, I know Mustafa and his wife that does Bosnian cooking lessons in Sarajevo. And it seems that the small people yeah, are... Yeah, they are wonderful. Yeah, they are. Uh, the small people are, are doing more heavy lifting than anybody else. 
would you agree or disagree with that? And secondly, doesn't that have an awful mental and physical drain on you trying to work and work and work to try and get this, you know, to be successful? Well, I, I would say it's exhausting and rewarding at the same time. Well, because at the end of the day, you know, we are all kind of in the same boat. We have the same goals. Um, I think it's just difficult to get everyone to sit on the same table, you know. But um, the last year, um, we found out about USA Tourism. And they kind of plan to become the Bosnia-Herzegovina Tourism Board, you know, because it does not exist so for the first time last year, we actually had events where we could all sit together and chat about pain points, you know, about our wishes, our hopes, and also travel together. Last October, we traveled with other travel agencies together and with USA Tourism, we traveled to Banja Luka, um, which was really great, you know, to meet the tourism organization visit Banja Luka and visit Srpska because you... Well, you need all those personal connections to get over the fact that there is no tourism board that can unite us all. So, you know, sometimes it, it feels like you're just running around all the time, um, trying to make connections, to meet people, to, to find partners to work with. But at the end of the day, that's also the beautiful thing, because then you really have a connection with those people that you pick as partners and when we have guests coming we can really tell them look those are friends and we we can vouch for them and we can really recommend you stay with them because they are great one of the things that has impressed me when i've done my research on 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 your company i'd like you to tell me a little bit more about your company in just a second but you already have an app where people can check out and, and, and look at different tours. You have spent a phenomenal amount of time creating um, different tour routes. Um, and and, and it, you and your husband, two individuals, have done more than what a country should have been expected to do. I know you'll feel terribly self-rewarded uh, about this, but sometimes I think you should get a little bit more support. Would, do you agree or disagree with that? Well, I mean, of course, it would be nice to get more support, but I think with all people that do it as a passion project, you know, of course, you would like to make money with it, but if it's, if it's small money in the beginning, you are also fine with it, you know? I think that's the, that's the curse and the good thing about being passionate about something. Um, and the app was kind of like, an add-on to our tours because I mean not everybody wants to have their tour planned out by a travel agency you know people travel differently some people just would like to have recommendations and do their own thing um, so as an addition to chafe our travel agency um, those those itineraries and things to do are kind of an addition and I got approached by uh, um, an Icelandic, Icelandic company, actually, they are called Rexy, and they hope to support, you know, travelers and, and Instagrammers and bloggers in monetizing their knowledge, you know, and it's like, it's like a win-win because all those people traveling extensively or living as experts in a country, they have all this knowledge and there's people that want to travel there and they don't know where to find the knowledge. So, um, yeah, I think what they did is a really great is a really great idea. It's a really great system, and I hope you know not only Bosnia and Herzegovina but many other countries too will show up on the app so that people can travel with local knowledge. You've created the tours. You've created a, a whole portfolio uh, of, of great and exciting things to see in the country. Um, is this just you not only doing all that but leading? these tours or do you have or have you been able rather to build up uh, a team of uh, guys and girls that help you execute this passion project as you called it for now it's just my partner and i um he is also a certified tour guide um so he's leading the tours 
I sometimes tag along to, you know, make people feel more comfortable to take some pictures that our guests can take home to see what questions they have so that maybe, you know, I can address them before they come here. Um, but yeah, it's mostly my husband doing, doing the tours and um, sometimes he's the tour guide. Sometimes he's also the driver because some people are scared on the infamous Balkan roads. <laughs> So um, they would like to have a driver. Um, but yeah, for now, it's just the two of us. But I really hope that um, in the future, we can find, you know, or we will have enough demand to to also hire local people because we also want to support the local community and economy as much as we can. Um, yeah, it's just that all the people that speak good German and can help us with our guests, they move to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, I, I, I know this is a terrible question to ask because it's going to put you on the spot possibly, but I have to ask it. If a, a, and a lot of people read my blog and, um, and they consume my content uh, internationally, and I get asked this question, <clears throat> which I find incredibly difficult to answer, so I want to, I want to get their question put to you. Um, David, we have... Two days. What do you think we should see in the two days that we've got? Now, you have to understand that I'm passionate about slow tourism. Uh, I'm not into this rush, rush, rush mentality. And I, I just have mm -hmm. to sit back and think, oh, my goodness. There's so many things. What can I pick out? So I'm not going to tell you what I pick out, but I'd like to ask you the question. Catty, Catty, I've got two days. What do you think I should see? So, um... I have the same thoughts as you. I'm like, oh my God, 48 hours. This is like nothing. You know, Chafe is also, it's about slow travel. And I don't know, probably not all of um, your audience is familiar with the Bosnian language um, because Chafe is basically like a deeply Bosnian sentiment. And it means to just enjoy the small moments, you know, that make life worth living for you. Um, so it's, yeah, our tours are really not about rushing through the country and ticking off a bucket list that you might have. Um, but if you really want to come and you only have 48 hours, but depending on where you, it really depends on where you land, like which airport. But let's assume it's Sarajevo, you know, because I'm from here and, um, and it's easiest for me, then... I would say that you really take your time to have a walk through the old town here. You know, also go to a museum to learn about the country's history. Not only the recent 30 years, but the whole history, because like there's like a thousand years of history. Um, I would really recommend you visit the marketplace to meet some local Bosnian people. And if you only have 48 hours, I would also recommend you do a cooking class because this brings you closer to locals and you get to try local cuisine and um, you will want to come back after that. You know, once you, you experience Bosnian hospitality, I'm, I'm really sure that you that you think 48 hours will not be enough. I need to return. I need to see more. Um, and then on the second day, I would really su just suggest a, a little hike up Trebevic to enjoy the view, to see the bobsleigh because it's really cool. There's all kinds of new graffiti now. And also just to give you a little taste on how many more cool hikes you could do all around the country um, once you return. And I'm sure you will return. I love the pitch. I thought it was great. And I hope there's a lot of people going to come uh, and see you guys because I'm going to ask you about where they can find you in a minute. Second question, uh, when it comes to foreigners uh, coming to BIH, I've been amazed, astounded actually, how many emails I've been getting uh, from foreigners, from Stranats, who say, I want to come and live there. I want to get away from the States. I want to get away mm -hmm. from the United Kingdom. Um, I don't want to go to Portugal because everybody's going to Portugal. How easy is it? Now, you're in the same boat as me, in a way. We're both married to locals. Mm -hmm. So 
We have access to the D visa, which allows us to stay temporarily for five years and then go further uh, if we wish. With the yeah. with the bureaucracy out of the way, because I'm not qualified to talk about it, but what would your advice be um, to a foreigner that says, yeah, I'd like to come on holiday, but more importantly, I'd like to come for the slow life, for the cheaper quality of life? What, what would you say to one of those? And they're normally <laughs> older people. They're like me. They're older people, right? Well, you know, now after the pandemic, it's easier to work remotely, so... Normally, what I recommend people is why don't you come and stay for 90 days? You can stay for up to 90 days. Most countries visa free, you know, especially from the European Union and Americans. So just try it out, you know, see if it's for you. And um, if you really like it and if you want to stay, use those 90 days to find a good immigration lawyer because I'm also not certified to to help with you know any of the of the legal stuff and also I don't have an employer here yet so I can't also speak about the work side of things much um yeah so try it out and if you like it find a professional to help you stay here that's what I would say I tell you one thing when we get to meet in real life whether that's in Sarajevo or hopefully uh, here in Banja Luka uh, one of the things that I'm going to show you uh, will be nothing to do with tourism, but I'm not so sure. It, m- it must be the same in Sarajevo. In, uh, up here, uh, uh, although I'm not a great expat person, I like my privacy, you know, but we've got people from Venezuela, Argentina, the Dominican Republic, uh, and all points north, right down to one lady who runs a restaurant in the town, and she's from Micronesia which is right deep in the middle of the Whoa. <laughs> yeah, right deep in the middle of the Pacific, the uh, what do they call it? The Federated States of Micronesia. So I think it's going to be great yes. uh, w- when you come and visit. So we're getting near the end because I know you're busy. Uh, so here we go. Are you ready? Take a deep breath. <laughs> Katy, here's the, que- here's the question. Chivap or Plieskovica and why? Oh, oh, that is so hard. Um, Pleskavica, when I'm in Serbia, and Chevapi, when I'm in Bosnia, Herzegovina. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's another thing we've got in common. I, I love Chivap. In fact, without giving too many secrets away, um, Uh, As soon as the weather gets better, uh, I'm doing the big Chivap tour with some people uh, that I know, and we're going to we're going to film it. We're going to do all the different Chivaps, one after the other, bang, 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 like a micro marathon. Um, As we wrap this up, Katia, as I said, oh, I love this. I can't wait to see it. (laughs) Well, well, when we get to Sarajevo, you'll have to come along for that part of the filming because it would be uh, really good. Katia, you have uh, your your small travel business, um, all businesses need help. Help is normally clients. Uh, where can people watching this, listening to this, or reading this, where can they find you, and what can you do for them? So we are on uh, social media, on Facebook and on Instagram, and, of course, we have a web page too. Um, we are called Chase but we write it a little bit differently because the Bosnian spelling is difficult for foreigners. So it's C-H-E-Y-S. Um, so you find us at chafe.ba um, or as chafe on, on Instagram and on Facebook. And what we do is personalized tours um, through Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, and we just tailor them to our guests' interests. Some like hiking, some like culture, some like food. So we can cater to all of those different interests. And each and every tour we do is different from the one before and from the next one. Um, yeah, so that would, that's what we do. We also do offer a couple of tours in Sarajevo that we felt were missing when we started out, like a food tour. 
um, through Garbavica, including a visit to the stadium because my husband is a huge um, Jaleo fan. And um, we do a little urban hike around the Sarajevo neighborhoods um, that people also love because you get to see how Sarajevans live. And yeah, that's basically what we do. We just hope to make people excited about this country and um, make them return for their second or third or fourth vacation. You never know. Well, that's the dream. Katty, thank you so much indeed for giving me your time. I know you're a very, very busy person. It can't be that easy, just two of you running such an exciting uh, project. Um, yeah, and I really, really do look forward to meeting you um, this year. By the way, what is, what is, what's, what, what, is, what, is your, what is your plan for 2023, just before we go? Um, well, we, we are sneaking off for a tiny vacation, I think, before the season starts. And then we will be here during the whole summer, hopefully having lots of guests that we can show around the country. Um, we are still planning out the year, so I hope there will be some exciting projects coming as well. Um, but they are not finished yet, so I will not talk about them now. I don't want to jinx anything. Um, but yes, thank you so much for, for the chat and for the invite to your podcast. And I also can't wait to meet. Cool. Well, that's Cathy. She's in Sarajevo. She's dashing off now because she's got work to do. If you want to check it out, it's Chafe Tachka Bar. Um, for non-Balkan speakers, that is C-H-E-Y-F dot B-A. Do check it out. Um, tell her when you contact her. I saw the podcast and I'm sure... You'll get a reply with an extra big smiley on it. <laughs>